You say, what are the three categories of sin? First John chapter two, do not love the world, nor the things in the world, all that's in the world. Here it is. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. You can't name one sin that doesn't go in those three exclusive categories. So the devil tempted Jesus in all three of those categories. Three temptations. And the tempter came and said to him, verse three, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. He was teaching, he was tempting him to have a selfish ministry. If you are the son of God, what's that all about? Jesus, 40 days earlier, had been baptized in the Jordan River. And what did the father say, affirming his son? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And so now the devil comes along and said, if you are the son of God, he's trying to get Jesus to doubt the word of God. Do you understand who it is that is out there trying to get you to doubt the word of God? Do you understand that that is the essence of liberalism? Theological liberalism is simply trying to get you to doubt what God has said in his word. Marriage is not just a man and a woman, they say, just doubt that. No, we're, we're more scientific, we're more elevated, we're more progressive today. I got news for you, that's not progress. Amen. To say that marriage is not just between a man and a woman, that is digression, that is not progression. The devil doubts the word of God. Oh, this baby in the womb, that's not a real human being, even though the Bible says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made in my mother's womb. I want to tell you something. Let God be right and everybody else be a liar. God's word is true. God's word is true. Somebody said, what are you going to do? If it just keeps going and liberalism keeps getting bigger, what are you going to do? Look at me. I'm going to do what I do about the weather. I never look at the weather. It's going to do what it's going to do. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Amen? And you know what? I'm not going to worry about laws and everything else. You know what? I've been preaching the gospel 40 plus years. I'm going to preach it till I die. When they try to put me in a casket, I'm going to still be saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. All right? I'm telling you, I'm going to preach as long as I can. I'm not trying to to, to show off here, I'm just trying to say, you know what? I'm not going to worry about what the world does. I don't answer to the world. I answer to God. And I'm going to tell people about Jesus and preach the Bible as long as I can. And that's where you need to be. You need to grab hold of a Bible and grab hold of it and let it grab hold of you until you're so deep in this thing that you cannot turn from any other way. Amen. I didn't even plan to say that. Oh, Jesus, have a selfish ministry. If you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. And Jesus doesn't parley with the devil. He doesn't do what Adam and Eve did. He doesn't talk to the devil. He just quotes scripture. He sticks him with the sword of the spirit. He said in verse four, oh, he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone or on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. That's Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse three, quotes scripture to him. Then Satan said, okay, you won't have a selfish ministry. Have a spectacular ministry. Have a showy ministry. Put on a, a real show, Jesus. Notice what he says in verse five on the screen there. Then the devil took him into the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple, said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it's written, he will come in. Now, the devil's quoting scripture here. He's quoting Psalm 91, verses 11 and 12. If you are the son of God, quote, he said, throw yourself down for it's written, he will command his angels concerning you and on their hands, they will bear you up so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. He's quoting scripture. You said, the devil knows scripture? Yeah, let me tell you something else. The devil comes to church. Just because you go to church and you know the scripture doesn't mean you're going to heaven. You got to be born again. You got to be saved. You got to be changed on the inside. You say, well, I go to church. That's enough. I'm a Christian. If I go to church, look, you can stand in a garage all you want to and you won't be a car. <laughs> Coming to 
Church doesn't mean you're saved. I'm all for coming to church. Good, great. So the Bible says here, he's tempting him. Have a spectacular ministry. Just jump off of this roof and God will save you. And Jesus said, no way. I'm not going to put on a show. No way. I'm not here to put on a show. Jesus, verse 7, said to him, on the other hand, it's written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. He said, okay, if you won't be selfish and if you won't be showy and spectacular, then have a shortcut. Just take a shortcut. I know you want a kingdom. I'll give you my kingdom, Satan says, if you'll just worship me. Notice what he says. In verse 8, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. That's the evil world system. And he said to him, Jesus, all these things I'll give to you if you'll fall down and worship me. That's what the devil wants. He wants worship. But he is not worthy of worship. If anybody is worshiping the devil here today, I'm telling you, you're worshiping a loser who is going to be cast into hell. If you want to worship the winner, that's Jesus Christ who has crushed him under his heel and under his feet. Go, Satan, Jesus said to him, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, serve him only. And the devil left him. And behold, angels came and began to minister to Jesus. I got news for you. Jesus was tempted, but he never yielded to temptation. How did he fight? He fought with fasting, and he fought with quoting the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. And that's how you and I come against the enemy as well, in faith we're praying, we're fasting at times whenever the Lord tells us to do that, but we live in the word and we will quote the word of God. We will not parley with the devil. We will not reason with the devil. We'll say, it is written, it is written, it is written, boom, boom, boom. And after a while he gets tired of being poked with the sword of the spirit and he bugs out, amen? That's where you gotta live. 